Melbourne. Let's talk to Steve Berry, motoring journalist, former Top Gear presenter. Steve, very good morning to you. Morning, mate. How, how the devil are you? Nice to see you. You look as if you're in jail. Well, there's, there's a couple <laughs> uh, that would like to see me incarcerated, but I've not been banged up yet. No, I'm at the gym, mate, trying to stave off the inevitable, you know. Yeah. to keep moving. Absolutely. A and a bit of exercise and all that. Absolutely. Now, there's a serious story I've got to talk to you about. 96-year-old woman has become the oldest woman in Britain to admit to causing death by dangerous driving after she killed a pensioner and injured a pedestrian with her Vauxhall Corsa. Serious question, I suppose, is, you know, should people as old as that be driving around in a car. Absolutely not. Does anybody think that's a good idea? If you are a professional driver of any kind in this country or you move people about on the water, on the roads or in the skies, there are all sorts of checks and balances to stop people who can't see, can't hear and don't know what blinking decade it is from operating dangerous vehicles. You're a HGV driver, Mike. At 65, you have to start taking a medical every three years. Right. And how does it work at the moment with cars? Is it 75? It doesn't work. What it works on is self-reporting. Right. It's You know there's somebody 108 driving around? Of is 108 it? years old. How is that not a recipe for disaster? I know. There's over 500 centenarians driving in the UK. Right. Over 500. It's complete madness. There are over 250 diseases or afflictions that you're supposed to report to the DVLA right. if you have to suffer for them. But as long as you keep it a self-reporting system, the people like my dad, who, to be honest, is 85 and shouldn't be driving because he's not the man he was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Yeah. It's I... self... But do you know what he's not going to do? Dob himself into the DBLA and say, do you know what? I shouldn't really be driving. I'm always bumping my little Nissan and something bad's going to happen. I'll tell you what, here's my driving licence. That's never going to happen. No. Like no, of course cars, not, because, you know, yeah. there'll, there'll be lots of older people who'll say, you know, I still need the car, I live in a rural place and yeah. I can't, you know, get out unless I've got a car and all of that. But I thought, yeah. I was under the impression that you had to take another test at 75. Is that not true? Yeah, um, no. <laughs> it, it's quite complicated. Right. But this, the, the number of it is this self-reporting bit. And the re there are two reasons I think that they won't switch to a system of checking. Shall we say the over 75s every year? Because if you're a HGV driver, you're getting checked every single year. And I think you're having medical every three years. Right. People who, who do drive HGVs will be able to tell me better. I just looked at it this morning when I saw this story. Right. Yeah. But the other problem is old people vote don't they? Yeah. Because they've not really got much else to do. Well, Once you've watched all to the be fair, on the road trip, they vote. And so if you come out as a political party and say, at the next election, we're going to say, like HGV drivers, over 65s have to take an annual health check to renew their driving licence. Instantly, millions of people across the UK go, right, well, I'm not voting for you, like, if you're taking right. your driving licence. You're taking away my freedom. Well, look what this woman's done. She's mounted the pavement. She doesn't know what day it is. She's killed somebody, seriously injured somebody else. And here's the thing, Mike. Do you know what's going to happen to her? Nothing. Well, you know what, though? Hang on, Steve. I'm going, to, I'm going to put a word in for the pensioners here, though, because there'd be more kids driving cars that kill people than pensioners, I would, I would guarantee you, and there'll be plenty you of people really causing... Hang on, hang on. Plenty of people causing accidents um, uh, who are very much younger than this woman. Um, and, and the point is is that the, 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 by far and away the biggest group of people who crash their cars are young men, aren't they? Yeah. But so you're not going to take their licences away? Mike, they're the people who make the, the country work. They're the people who mend the roads, who keep the power on, who keep the water coming through those pipes. What was that 96-year-old woman that doing that required her to drive a motorcar? My next-door neighbour, Ken, lovely fella, when he get, needs to go somewhere, he gets the ring and ride to come round and pick him up. 
Because do you know what? He's at a point in life where he shouldn't yeah. and couldn't but that's drive, drive a motor car. But not, every, but not everybody can do that, is what I'm saying. I mean, I think if, it would be sensible to have some kind of regulation of some kind, but I don't think you should be stopping people, generally speaking, from driving just because of an age, you know. I mean, in that case, you know, you wouldn't let Donald Trump drive a car. Or Joe, and I wouldn't let Joe Biden drive anything. I wouldn't let him drive a golf cart, to be fair. But well, you know what I mean? You know, you can't, you can't, I, I'm not interested in blanket banning people from the age of 65. That's too young. You know, most people now of 65, uh, it's like you were 45. Rubbish. That's not, I'm, well, you, well, you're not as old as I am, right? You're not as old as yeah. I am. And you're suggesting that in a year's time, I should be banned from driving. No, mate. What I'm saying is you should have an annual check of your ability to see, hear and operate a motor vehicle. Well, I think if I'm doing a three and a half hour radio oh, show every day, that should probably suffice. I don't think we're interested in taking a test run by the Stasi. Right, with them bottle bottom geeks that you're wearing, I think you should be getting an eye test to see if you should drive now. Well, I think you should get a test to see whether you haven't lost your mind. You know, you seem to have come, you seem to have come on here really? and decided to be very anti-pensioner. I'm not having it. Mike, why do you... Th I'm not anti pension I nearly want my blinking self, mate. Why do you think they test HGV drivers every year? Well, because they're driving because something which is literally bigger than your house. Oh, right. So those, the person who died underneath one and a half tonnes of steel when that old deer mounted the pavement because she didn't know which pedal to press or what day it was, you're saying that a car is a dangerous... No, I'm not saying that. Car, why, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just, I'm just saying that I think you should be very careful about making blanket bans on based on age, particularly if it's going to I'm be... I'm not saying that. You're not listening, Mike. A check once a year... Yeah, but who's going to do that? We haven't, got, we haven't got enough room in the system. Who's going to, what, you're going to go to the GP? And good luck getting an appointment and then get somebody right. somebody to do it. Who's going to do the health check? OK. There's, enough, there's, enough, there's not enough room in the system to check people, but there's this thing called the MOT test that a motor vehicle is required to pass every yeah. year. So there's enough room in the system to check the vehicles, but you're saying there's not enough room in the system Well, who's going to, to do check the check? Them. Well, who's going to do the check? You're going to go down you know to your local garage. Mean? MOT test centres. Why don't we have health MOT <laughs> test centres? <laughs> you definitely oh, have gone them. mad. Yeah. You've gone mad, Steve. Let people, let's just let people who can't see, can't hear, no. don't know what day of the week it is, think it's 1967. No. You've gone, you've gone mad. You've gone mad. Listen, I'm going to let you go. We've run, we're running out of time. You've gone, you've gone mad. I'm not having it. Uh, so you go down the MOT centre, uh, you go in one door to get yourself tested, and you give the car to the guy to, uh, to put it through um, uh, the, the Clean Air Act or whatever the hell it is. I'm not having it. Absolutely mad.